for using IELTS listening test. There is a good news for you guys. Now you can practice unlimited speaking tests on our application Baby Code. I know, I know. Some people will say कि मैं तो अपने friends के साथ practice कर लेता हूँ. मैं अपने institute में रोज test देता हूँ. या मैं mirror के सामने practice करता हूँ. लेकिन रोज एक या दो test देना is not enough to clear IELTS. और आपके friends और mirror आपको valuable feedback कभी नहीं दे सकते. लेकिन अगर आप Baby Code application use करते हो, तो आप कहीं भी और कभी भी unlimited test दे सकते हो. Baby code पे practice करना is like having a personal teacher. App will take exam like a real examiner. After test, you can check your grammar, fluency, or pronunciation mistakes. Even you can check your band score. This app will provide you free test every day. So do not forget to try. Link in the description. But if you need more test access, it will just cost you three ninety nine. Wait. If you use my promo code IELTS50, that will give you even more 50 rupees discount. Now it's like a one-time meal money, but this will help you to crack your IELTS exam. Part one. You are going to hear a conversation about renting an apartment. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. Now listen to the tape and answer questions one to six. How can I help you, sir? Hi, I'm interested in renting an apartment in your building. Can you show me around inside? Sure, my pleasure. Do you know what kind of apartment you're looking for? I'm thinking of something for my best friend and I. The apartment doesn't have to be too big, just something comfortable for the two of us. I'm looking for a kitchen, two bedrooms, and a bathroom. Just something simple. Okay. Well, let me show you what we have to offer. We divide our apartments into three categories. There are standard apartments, upgraded standard apartments, and luxury apartments. Please follow me. This apartment just went up for rent yesterday. The old tenants moved into a larger one. This apartment is what I call the standard apartment. It's small, but has everything you need. The kitchen comes with a refrigerator, an oven, and a stove. There is one bathroom with a shower, but no bathtub. The rooms are a good size, and both have their own closets. The living room has enough space for a couch. We will provide a television for you. These apartments are very popular with students because they are affordable and practical. Right now, we are renting these out for only one thousand dollars a month. I think this is a little bit on the small side. There's no space for a dining table or even for an extra desk. We will both need room to study. If there are guests over, we hope to be able to have a dining table big enough for at least four people. Do you have anything slightly larger? Maybe just an apartment with a bigger living room. Well, let's take a look. Right now, we also have an opening for a luxury apartment. This apartment is larger. It has three bedrooms, and all three are larger than the last one. And there are two bathrooms, and all have bathtubs. The kitchen is also larger, and come with an additional dishwasher and freezer. The living space has plenty of space for a dining room. How much is the rent on these apartments? These are more expensive, usually in the two thousand five hundred dollar range. Don't forget that there is an, an additional bedroom, so you could find another roommate to lower the cost. Hmm, I think that's a little bit on the expensive side. We don't really have the time to find another roommate, so it's probably better to stick with the two bedroom places. Is there anything between these two? Come with me. I can show you this apartment right now, but there are people living in it. 
There are no more of these kinds of apartments available at this moment, but if you decide that you like it, I can put you on the waiting list, and as soon as we have openings, you will be contacted. Sure, let's take a look. This is the upgraded standard apartment. As you can see, it's larger than the other two bedroom apartment. There are two bedrooms and two bathrooms, one in each room. The living room comes with a television, but no furniture. The kitchen is around the same size as the other smaller apartment. The basic difference is the additional bathroom and larger living room. These rent for around $1,400. Now look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 7 to 10. Seems like a good deal. Do you know when an apartment like this will be available? That's hard to say. I know these people who live here right now should be graduating soon, so they might be moving out. Well, I guess I'll put my name on the waiting list. Hopefully there'll be an opening as soon as possible. That sounds like a good plan. I will notify you as soon as we have vacancies. You will have to leave us some information and a student identification number. Sure, no problem. My full name is Robert Jack Browning. Could I have your age, please? I'm 38. Your major? I'm studying biology. How about naming some of your hobbies? Hmm, fishing, golf, watching movies, and spending time with my family. Sounds like a good life. What is the price range of the apartment you are looking for? Somewhere between $1,000 to $1,500. Your student identification number, please? QS45890. Could you repeat that? QS45890. Lastly, could you leave us a phone number? OK. It's area code 236-580-2287. Thank you very much. I will give you a call as soon as possible. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a trainer giving a talk to people who want to learn outdoor survival skills. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen and answer questions 11 to 16. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our outdoor survival program. As you know, this week you'll be learning some of the basic information and skills you need to look after yourself independently in the outdoors. These first two days, we'll be based here in the classroom and then we'll be taking a camping trip to put into practice some of the things you've learned. I'm going to start off with the topic of food. And to start with, I'll describe just two methods which we'll be putting into practice at our camp and which make use of natural resources, the steam pit and the bamboo pot. I've got two posters here to make things clearer, and I'll start with the steam pit here. To make this, 
You'll need some dry sticks, some grass, some loose earth, and some stones. And for this week only, some matches. <laughs> the first thing you do is to dig a shallow pit in the place you've chosen to do your cooking. Let's say about 25 centimeters deep and 30 centimeters wide. Your sticks have to be a bit wider than the pit because you have to put a line of them along the top from one end of the pit to the other. Before setting light to these, you take some large stones and arrange them on top. Then you start the fire and wait till the wooden platform burns through and the stones fall into the pit. At this point, brush away any pieces of hot ash from the stones. You can use a handful of grass and then take another stick and push it down into the center of the pit between the stones. After that, you cover the whole pit with a thick layer of grass. And then you can put your food on it, wrapped in more pieces of grass, like parcels. Finally, cover the whole thing with earth. You have to pat it firmly to seal the pit. Then all you have to do is take the stick out and pour a bit of water into the opening that it leaves. It should take about four hours for your food to cook as it cooks slowly in the steam that's created inside the pit. Now you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. So, simple but effective. The other method you're going to practice this week is the bamboo oven. Now the steam pit is ideal in certain conditions because the heat is below ground level. For example, if there's a strong wind and you're afraid a fire might spread. But when it's safe to have an open fire, you can use the bamboo oven method. You get a length of bamboo, which as you probably know is hollow, and consists of a number of individual sections with a wall in between. You use a sharp stick to make a hole in each of the dividing walls apart from the end one. Then you lean the bamboo over a fire with the top propped up by a forked stick and the bottom sitting on the ground. You pour enough water in the top to fill the bottom section and then light a fire underneath that section to heat the water. Then you put your food inside the top section and the steam coming up the bamboo through the holes you made cooks it. I'm going to move on now to food itself and talk about some of the wild plants you might cook. I'm going to begin with fungi. That's mushrooms and toads. I'm sure you'll be aware that some of these are edible and they're delicious, but some of them are highly poisonous. Now, whether they're poisonous or not, all fungi that you find in the wild should be cooked before eating because that helps to destroy any compounds in them that might be mildly toxic. But be aware that any amount of cooking won't make poisonous varieties any safer to eat. Unless you can definitely identify a fungus, you should never eat it. It's not worth the risk. And you need to be really sure because some fungi that are poisonous are very similar in appearance to certain edible varieties. They can easily be mistaken for each other. So having said all that, fungi are delicious when they're freshly picked and although they are only moderately nutritious, they do contain minerals which the body needs. I'll move on now to leafy plants, which are generally... That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear part of a radio program about do-it-yourself house painting. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-four. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our weekly series on home improvements. Today's program is about do-it-yourself house painting. There's never been a better time for people who like to do their own interior house painting. Although people still lead very busy lives, Thanks to the availability of various new DIY materials, you can now decorate your home in a more efficient and a more environmentally friendly way. In 2009 alone, approximately 53 million litres of the paint that was sold in the UK were left untouched. That's enough to fill 21 Olympic-sized swimming pools. It's easy to overestimate how much paint you'll need to decorate your room if you use guesswork. And if you know exactly how much paint is needed, you avoid unnecessary waste. There are automatic paint calculators available now. Most of the major paint manufacturers provide them. Look on their websites or just Google paint calculator and see what comes up. Then simply measure the circumference and height of the room in metres. Enter this into the calculator, along with the type of surface you're painting, and it will tell you how many litres of paint you'll need. But if you do end up with leftover paint, you can donate it to an organisation like Community Repaint. They will take the paint from you and redistribute it to local charities, and voluntary organisations, so it goes to a good home. You can find more information about Community Repaint on communityrepaint, all one word, dot org dot uk. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Another way of avoiding paint wastage is to check you're completely happy with your colour choice before starting to paint. For example, you can get a small sample of the colour you're thinking of using, then paint a board and move it around the room so you can see how it looks against your furnishings and in different lights. Also, it's always better to buy high quality paints because you get what you pay for. If you buy cheap paint, you might need to apply two or three coats to achieve the same coverage that you'd get from one coat of a good quality paint. You could also spend a week on a job that could have been done in a day or two. And consider the environment. Most paint manufacturers now sell water-based paints that don't contain harmful chemicals or give off harmful odours, so get one of these. You can also buy paint that's packaged in recyclable containers. There's a lot more choice than there used to be. You can only do a good job which will last if you prepare the surfaces thoroughly before painting. In fact, 
In many ways, if you want to do a professional-looking job, this is more important than the painting itself. If there are any cracks or patches of loose plaster, painting over them won't solve the problem. Take the plaster out and fill the holes, allowing enough time for the new plaster to dry. And you won't get a smooth finish if the walls are dusty or greasy, so washing with water isn't enough. Use a solution of decorator's soap and rinse well with warm water afterwards. When you're ready to paint, we suggest you use a medium pile roller for walls and ceilings. A lot of people tend to use short pile rollers, but these give a patchy finish, and that wastes paint and time. Similarly, long pile rollers can create a thick textured effect, which looks messy. The same goes for brushes. The stronger the bristles, the easier they are to wash and reuse. And as you've chosen a water-based paint, clean your brushes with cold water because it's more energy efficient that way. As you're decorating, keep transferring small amounts of paint into a tray and keep topping it up when you need to. This reduces the chance of it being contaminated by dust and pieces of dirt. And finally, water-based paint doesn't have a lingering smell, so that's not an issue anymore. But it's airflow rather than heat that helps the paint dry quicker. So, to help finish the job in the quickest time, leave your doors and windows open. The faster the paint is dry and the job finished, the quicker you can start enjoying your room. In tomorrow's program, I'll be giving some advice on... That is the end of Section 2. That is the end of Part 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. This is Jane Frost with this morning's edition of Wake Up with Frost. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning. This is Jane Frost with this morning's edition of Wake Up With Frost. As you all know, for the last week we've been running a survey trying to find out what you, the listeners, think is the greatest invention of the last 200 years. The response has been amazing, double the amount we had last year, so thanks to all of you for taking part. We've had about 2,000 responses online and about the same on our phone lines. The lines are now closed and this morning I can announce what the results were. So, here it is. You, the listeners, have chosen as the greatest technological invention of the past 200 years, and let me not forget to mention that 65% of you voted for this, it's the bicycle.
Yes, the bicycle first invented in 1818, and would you believe it, the first bicycle was made of wood. The second bicycle had iron wheels. I cannot imagine what that must have been like to ride. It would have kept you fit at any rate. But for me, the best thing about the bicycle was what it did for women's rights. Yes, in the 1890s, it was the bicycle that meant women could change their clothing, start wearing trousers or pantaloons, as they were known. Before then, women's clothes had been really uncomfortable. And I'd imagine quite difficult to breathe in. So, thanks to the ordinary bicycle, it was not only the man who wore the trousers in a home. Instead, women could now feel far more equal to their male contemporaries. And I'm sure you'll agree, the bicycle is a great way to get regular exercise, and of course, it's much better for the environment. And today, over one billion people all over the world ride bicycles, and for some, it's their only means of getting around from A to B. So, to all you bicycle riders out there, keep up the good work. Coming in a close second with forty-two percent is the computer. I found out something interesting about the computer, which is that really, this word first meant someone who did mathematical calculations. Of course, today, with the development of the personal computer, computers are being used for everything from home use to business and even digital photography. I don't know about you, but I can't imagine life without a computer now. I guess closely related to the computer is the internet, and this got twelve percent of your votes. Maybe, like myself, many of you might think of the internet as being the World Wide Web. But actually, the web is only one part of the internet. The internet began as part of the United States military network, but it later began to be used by businesses and academic institutions. Of course, today the internet has so many uses. We use it for shopping online and entertainment, as well as to find information and send emails. But sadly, there is a darker side to the internet, and some of you have sent me emails about this. Finally, with five percent of your votes, is the radio. We think the radio was invented by Marconi in 1896, and he opened his first radio or wireless factory in the United Kingdom in 1898. In 1906, a man called Reginald Fessenden gave the first radio broadcast from Massachusetts. Ships could hear him at sea, and apparently he played the violin. As yet, listeners, I've spared you from having to listen to my guitar playing, but certainly radio is still important. Let's not forget that it was by radio that the Titanic sent signals to other ships. And with the popularity of TV today, I was secretly pleased so many of you had still placed importance on the radio. So there you have it, the results of our survey. I think there are still important inventions that were not chosen but deserve a mention: nuclear power, and of course, communication satellite. Something which I am certain will continue to change the face of how we communicate with each other over both long and short distances. In fact, for me, the mobile phone is one of the greatest inventions of the last two hundred years. If I think back to my first phone, and then I look at what is happening now. Children born today will probably be more likely to have their first experience of the internet on a mobile phone screen rather than a computer monitor. Some of the new mobiles that are now being sold make it just as easy and as quick to find information on the web as on a computer. And let's not forget that mobiles now have digital cameras, word processing facilities, so you can type all your documents and even personal organizers. I think it's quite possible that the mobile may even replace computers one day. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Thank you for using IELTS listening test. There is a good news for you guys. Now you can practice unlimited speaking test on our application Baby Code. I know, I know. Some people will say कि मैं तो अपने friends के साथ practice कर लेता हूँ. मैं अपने institute में रोज test देता हूँ. या मैं mirror के सामने practice करता हूँ. लेकिन रोज एक या दो test देना is not enough to clear IELTS. और आपके friends और mirror आपको valuable feedback कभी नहीं दे सकते. लेकिन अगर आप Baby Code application use करते हो, तो आप कहीं भी और कभी भी unlimited test दे सकते हो. Baby code पे practice करना is like having a personal teacher. App will take exam like a real examiner. After test, you can check your grammar, fluency, or pronunciation mistakes. Even you can check your band score. This app will provide you free test every day. So do not forget to try. Link in the description. But if you need more test access, it will just cost you three ninety nine. Wait. If you use my promo code IELTS fifty, that will give you even more fifty rupees discount. Now it's like a one time meal money. But this will help you to crack your IELTS exam.